Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another uh, Bates Botanical Boot Camp here. Um, it's a nasty day here at the nursery. It's raining, uh, kind of gloomy, so it's a good day to be inside doing this. Um, today our topic is fall garden prep, so we're going to be talking about that. And mainly I'm going to be talking about vegetable gardens. When I think about garden prep, I think about uh, vegetable gardens. So uh, we're going to go there, and let's just dive right on in it is into the fall season and it's about time to get planted so let's talk about some things we need to do before we do that um and the first thing into the summer season into the summer season excuse me Mm -hmm. it's the start of the fall season thanks tyler um so anyway getting back um the first thing we got to do um, within our gardens or raised beds, whatever it is, is to remove all the old stuff from the spring and summer. Um, this might pain you a little bit because you might still have some tomatoes on the vine. Uh, most of us probably don't. The tomato season is pretty well done, uh, but tomato plants are pretty big and they take up a lot of space. So if you still have a tomato plant that's out there that's producing for you, great. And you want to keep it, that's fine. Keep going. If you need the valuable space, though, and you've got a tomato that's still got a few maybe little green ones on it um maybe let's just think it's time to kind of remove those plants get them out of there and make some space for some new um now most of your other spring crops are, are probably done as well so your squashes your zucchinis um watermelon cucumber things like that those are pretty well done by now typically um let's get those out of the garden as well and um what we don't want there is one peppers typically still last later into the season so if there was something you decided to keep because your peppers still have a lot of peppers on them um then that would be something that i would recommend keeping because they will keep producing for a long time But other than that, it's about time to get restarted. Um, So saying that, um, when you do remove this type of stuff, one common thing you need to be mindful of is to be to be clean about it you know to tomatoes specifically um typically get some pretty nasty leaves down at the bottom part of the plant and they can kind of leave behind um some little fungal spores maybe for next season or for this next crop that's coming on so when we do remove the tomatoes be gentle about it don't be just jerking them out and ripping stuff around uh, you know be gentle about those get them out of the garden And then what we're going to do after we get all of our plant material cleaned up out of the bed or the raised bed, um, we are going to probably, typically I like to kind of remove the first like couple, two or three inches of soil um, that's in there and uh, get rid of that. And then we'll top dress with for some fall nutrients uh, for our fall crops with a compost blend, which uh, we sell many compost, um, um, you know, materials here. Uh, You can get them all over the place. But Anyway, it's a good idea to go back and just add a nice top-dressed layer of some organic material back to your soil to help improve it. Um, So there you go. Whenever you get started, those are the first two things to be clean and remove all the old, dead, dying, diseased, whatever. Get all that stuff out of there, and let's just start fresh. So, like I said, adding the compost is going to help a lot. Um, And then let's talk about it you know what we plant in the fall um we call it the um our fall veggies is is what we call it but i need to uh, kind of clear the air on this a little bit is that yes they har- we typically harvest these plants in the fall and i think that's why we kind of call them fall veggies which makes sense now you can't just plant fall veggies late into the fall like we we're not really quite into fall yet but that's good we need to start getting these things out like now like our weather broke uh every year is different so it's kind of based based on the weather here in middle tennessee but every year is different but whenever the weather kind of breaks and you can kind of tell like we're not into those hundreds we're not into the 90s much anymore and then the night temperatures start to dip down into those 60s sometimes even 50s that's whenever it's time to think about the fall crops because what we need is warmth during the day, a little bit cool at night, but not too hot during the day. So we do need warmth during the day, though, to let these plants get mature enough to kind of handle some of those cooler weathers that, that come on into the fall. A much bigger, mature broccoli plant, we'll just say, can take a frost a lot better than a small little broccoli plant can. That makes sense. I mean, there's more leaves, there's more you know, coverage on top of the plant to kind of help from a, from a frost. So getting the plants bigger earlier is what we need to do. Most people always miss out on their timing and they start too late and then they don't actually get a harvest later on in the fall because a freeze will come and, and uh, you know, make that not happen as well for you. So um, getting these things out pretty much now is, is what we need to be thinking about. <clears throat> so what do we plant in the fall? 
Typically, it's going to be things like lettuce, cabbage, kale, um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, turnip greens, collard greens, mustard greens, all of those are all what we term as like cool season crops. Um, so we have all of those available right now. You can buy all of these from starts if you want to, all of the ones that you want to set out. Um, but you can also go the other route, which is to drop you some seed. Um, it's much cheaper and you get a lot more um, if you do these things from seed. Now, I will say broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts typically are ones we are going to just start. Um, you're just going to buy starts of that we already have. It's just a lot easier that way. Um, but for the other ones, which is the collards, the kales, the turnips, and the mustards, those are all something that we can start from seed, especially if you're wanting to do um, not necessarily a, a, you know, a fall garden for your own food, but to do a fall, fall garden for a cover cropping, which cover cropping is just a simple way of saying having something over the garden while it is dormant over the wintertime. So the things like that, if you need a big broadcasted area, say you've got a big garden that you like to do just in the ground or whatever, broadcasting a lot of that seed over top of your whole garden is good practice for a good cover crop over the winter time. Um, also, if you wanted to you know, simply eat your kale and your collards and all those leafy greens, that's fine too, but it's still much more cost effective to just buy you a packet of seed and drop those seeds right on top of the dirt and kind of press them in, make sure they're moist, and then you'll see a very quick response. Within typically a week and a half, you're going to start to see those, see those seedlings pop up. Um, now I will say if you're going to start doing seed, you'll probably at this point in the season, if you do seed now, you probably won't get fully, fully mature plants by the end of the season, but small plants are good too. Um, and with seeds, you can always just plant more than what you think, you know, just that, that way that if you don't get great germination, at least you get some germ germination, whatever. So always go more. If you do have a, you know, a drop, a lot of seed and all of the seed comes up and they're all too close together, you can always thin out what you don't want later. So always go heavier on the front end and then we can thin later on if you have them too, too close together. But do know a lot of these leafy greens um, can grow very close together um, and still produce a lot for you. So a uh, good way to do that. Lettuce is um, another one that you can drop from seed. Uh, it's not that hard at all, much cheaper that way. And um, it's, a, it's another good one. Lettuce can take it pretty cold, y'all. It's, it, it's fine with that, but do know don't plant lettuce um, whenever whenever temperatures are like still above 80s during the day. They'll bolt pretty quickly on you. Bolting just simply means it wants to go to flower and then seed. Uh, whenever they bolt and they do send up a little flower stalk, the quality of the leaf gets bitter, if you will. It's not a very good, it's not as good of a flavor as what you're going to want. So. Um, let the let the lettuce likes it cooler. So you know those mid seventies that we get during the day here coming up soon. Uh, good time to get lettuce out. No, actively grow, and they're a fast growing leafy plant. So you'll see something pretty quickly with that um, for your harvest. So that is um, some of the things that yeah you want to um, think about planting this time of year. Another good practice. Uh, Tyler put this pretty pot right in front of me. Um, Using pansies within your mixed container. These are all pansies or violas. Oh, these are technically here. Let me turn it. Technically violas. We're about to be covered up with pansies and violas, and it is a um, fall crop as well. But like I just mentioned about the other ones, we need to get them in whenever it's still a little bit warm outside, and they have time to actively grow before it actually gets cold. Um, so, but. Good practice if you ask me, especially if you have raised beds, is to not just make them functional, but make them pretty too. So adding some color into your raised beds is always good practice if you ask me. Um, it makes for a veggie garden to look just a lot better, I, I think. So um, let's talk a little bit about some issues. This isn't really a prep thing. This is more of a uh, what to kind of look out for a little bit with the fall veg. So say you've got your fall veggies planted and you're kind of watching them grow. One big serious pest problem that happens with the cold crop veggies is a little thing called the imported cabbage moth or the imported cabbage worm. You've probably heard of this if you've ever grown brassicas before, which brassicas are those these fall crops I'm talking about. You have probably seen cabbage worm. It's a little white moth, actually, that starts off, lays an egg right on the host plant, which is on these, and then it emerges with a little green worm. It's kind of green. Some of them are even kind of like clearish green. They'll always be on the backsides of your leaves, and they can cause a lot of damage um, if the numbers get too high. So scouting your plants, um, looking at them, making sure they're staying clean is good practice. Go to the leaves whenever the seedlings are young 
and turn the leaves over to the back side and look for eggs early in the year. The eggs are going to be little yellow, like balls, small, little yellow eggs on the back sides of the leaves. Go ahead and just smush those anytime you see them, and that'll help right off the bat. And then later on, you're going to see some worms probably. It's part of it. Uh, we're not out there inspecting every single day or anything, so you're probably going to see a few cabbage worms. <coughs> Excuse me. There is uh, plenty of preventative sprays and even sprays to take care of them after you've got a problem. They're not actually all that hard to kill, but if you want to be organic, um, scouting is the best method. So whenever you see damage, the first thing I, I try to tell this to people is that you're going to look for damage on your plants before you're ever even probably going to see a caterpillar. They are green. They are on the back sides of the leaves. They tend to hide pretty well. So you're probably not going to see a worm, but what you're going to see is leaves on the outer margin for the most part that are going to be chewed on it looks like a classic caterpillar just chewing on some leaves uh, no different whenever you see that damage you can almost bet there's going to be a worm in there so get in there look around find it pluck them off throw it in the grass stomp on it whatever you got to do that's the most organic method is to just hand pick them off and the more you can do that the less issues you're going to have down the road with these plants um, a common problem especially with broccoli is that if you have a cabbage worm problem and your broccoli is getting big and it's starting to get a nice head on it, a florette right in the center like they do, it starts to get, once it gets larger, if you have a bad worm infestation, those worms literally get inside that broccoli head so tight, like in every little crevice up underneath that broccoli that it it's horrible. I mean, it, you cannot get to them. You know how broccoli florets are very tight whenever they first come out. You can't get a spray or, any, or even your fingers down in there to get to those worms. So, once it gets to that level, um, it's something that you'll have to, once you harvest the broccoli, you need to make sure, unless you want to be eating some worms, you got to make sure you cut that up really good and look in there and make sure you get rid of all, all the extra worms that are going to be down in that broccoli head. Um, another good indicator that you've got a cabbage worm issue is you'll see their little balls of poop, and they're for the most part green. Uh, greenish blackish if you will um, and it's just their excrement and they will be they'll drop their those and they'll be kind of amongst the leaves and sitting on top of them or maybe even on the on the ground around it you might see some of, of that evidence that's another key indicator to look around to find those worms and either uh, hand pluck them or get a spray that's going to uh, combat them because they can be a real a real pest problem it's not it's something you gotta you gotta you know, look out for because they, they can be, they can have some damage. Yeah, um, you think, oh, innocent white butterfly, <laughs> look at you visiting my garden. And then, oh, no, what is this holes in my bro? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> and then you peel the leaves up um, underneath and it's just awful. Rampant. Yeah, yeah, it's it can be pretty bad. Um, uh, do know, too, though, not to freak out so much if you have, uh, say your plants are starting to get larger, more mature, and they're getting fairly big. Don't worry so much about, you know, if, if you've taken care of your worm issue, but they've left behind their holes or they left behind some cut up leaves or whatever, leave them on there unless they're just, I mean, unless there's just nothing left. But holes in leaves are really not the end of the world. It, they're still actively photosynthesizing on all of the green parts of the, of the leaf. So dealing with holes in a vegetable garden is something that you have to deal with and just be okay with. Not every single plant is going to look perfect 100% of the time. It rarely ever happens, especially here in Middle Tennessee. So uh, take care of the, the issue when it when it comes, but deal with what's what nature left behind, which is some of those holes in the in, in the leaves. It's part of it. Yeah, and brassicas actually have really snappy leaf stems. You could practically just grab them and snap down and up, and they will pop off. It pops right off, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty clean. So if you have one that is mostly eaten away, and it's unsightly, do that. Yeah. And also, I don't know if you mentioned, Austin, but thuricide uh, oh, yeah. or BT, BT is yeah, a BT really is a, good mm -hmm. way to organically control worms. Yeah, combat them. And uh, you just want to spray up until about 10 to 12 days before harvest. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's that. Um, gosh, what else? Oh, uh, another good thing to mention is we need some rapid growth on uh, our brassicas to kind of get them big before the fall season comes around and uh, you can achieve this a little bit quicker by using some fertilizer um, in your rows or around your plants as a side dressing which just literally means 
laying some some fertilizer down on either side of the plant all the way down the row um, or if you've got more of a raised bed scenario that's kind of more like squares it's not like in rows at all you can just literally fertilize around the drip line of the plant uh, the drip line is the edge of the plant where the water drips off down into the soil so um, just putting some fertilizer down around each individual plant working it in the first two or three inches of the soil and then watering um, will speed up that growth a little bit and get them a little bit bigger before it's time to to harvest in the fall so um, yes that will help you out a lot getting them big these these crops aren't like really long day crops or anything i mean brussels sprouts may be pretty long i think they're closer up in the 70 day mark but most are kind of you know even lettuce is in that that 40 to 60 lettuce is on the low end on the 40 yes. side and then broccoli gets lettuce, up into that like spinach, 60 day spinach is pretty early yeah spinach is early brussels sprouts i'm sorry i tried so many years we're not a good brussels sprout state i'm sorry yeah I, i've grown brussels sprouts and uh, they they finish for me but they usually just finish small i mean they're, they're tender and they're yeah. tasty for other people, I'm not much of a Brussels sprout guy, to be honest with you. But I am. I love them. Yeah, my wife loves them, and, and yeah. I, I try to grow them, and I do grow them successfully, but they uh, they just they, they never get as big as what I want. You'll be to looking get. at little pinky size. Little bitty, bitty things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing we need to talk about later on in the growing season, once again, this isn't really a prep thing, but I'm just going through it all today. Why not? Um, is to... Keep an eye on the weather. That's one of the biggest things, especially once we start getting into like that Halloween time where we typically start to see uh, frost slash freeze. That's uh, when I kind of think to start watching the weather more is kind of around that Halloween time. Um, keeping an eye on the weather and knowing when it's going to dip, um, you know, just a little bit, get into that 34, 33, 32, kind of that light frost, if you will. Typically on a bigger plant, they can handle a light frost. These, these plants are pretty cold tolerant. Um, now, if you ever see temperatures getting down into the below 30s, into the 27s and, you know, around there, if it's like going to be like an actual hard freeze, those will actually take a plant they'll they'll if your broccoli or something's full head or whatever um if they get temperatures that cold it'll put this white cast over the whole top of the plant and it'll eventually turn yellow and just kind of turn to mush it, it ends up being bad so if you're at a point to where um you're starting to finish is your crops are starting to finish up they're getting nice and a little bit big or whatever and they're and you see we got this hard freeze coming in maybe it's a good time to just either go ahead and harvest um, and and get your crop for the season or um, it's a good practice to kind of keep something around either you have like a, maybe you're a you're an avid gardener and you've got some maybe like a hot maybe you planted them in like a I'll go over that in a second like a high tunnel or something you know what I'm talking about if you've done this it's simple it's like making a row um, with like PVC and make a bow on top of it with it with like a couple of elbows on in the middle where you can join PVC to make like a hoop and then you can run something plastic or sheets or something like that that's a top over to over top of your brassicas and then running down a row and you can seal it up on the ends and that's good practice to if we are going to see those temperatures and you want to keep that crop going through the season um, to go ahead and throw that over top of it. Um, like I said, that's more for the advanced gardeners that are doing it and have done it for years. Um, a, uh, another simple approach is if you've got a smaller garden, raised beds or whatever, just do this as a hobby. Um, having some sheets or covers available um, to cover the, on those really nasty nights. So try your best not to lay anything like right on top of the plants. If we could get like a little bit of air in between your sheet and your plant, that adds for a little buffer zone right there of air in between, which actually is a pretty good insulator. That's going to help you out um, keeping the, 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 the heavy freezes off, off of the plant and extending the life of your crops and uh, getting, you know, a, a lot more through the rest of the season. Um, if you've you know, if you wanted to go, if you want to build yourself a little um, greenhouse, maybe you're getting into that and you really want to extend the, the life of your of your plants, you know, building a little a little greenhouse isn't a bad idea or buying one or whatever if you've already got one. Um, growing Nebraska's in there is a is a good idea too on extending the the life of your of your crops. So just be mindful of the weather. Check it whenever it's you feel like it's going to get cold, then um, like I said, either harvest or get them, get them covered up for the night. 
And Austin is mainly, uh, for those of you who don't live in our area, is talking about Zone 7A, which is where we are in Middle Tennessee. Now that is, I mean, that strip does generally cover a wide area in our region, but um, the same rules apply for, you know, for freezing weather and these plants. It's just when is that going to start happening? So for us, it would be towards the end of October, beginning November. Yeah, typically. And I say typically, Middle Tennessee is far from typical. Every year, it seems like there's something different. Um, last year, I think it was the the horrible freeze first. It like a, didn't even barely have a frost yet. It just kind of went to a straight freeze, which just whacked tons of things. Um, and then had a warm back up until we had another frost later on. So it's just a, every year's different. And fall gardening in Middle Tennessee is something that you either – it's not even about being good at it or not. It's about it's about the weather and when to do it. Timing is so crucial on when to get this stuff out. And for me, it's just based on observing the weather, feeling it out, just having that feeling of, okay, we're not having those 100-degree days anymore. We're dropping down. We're, we're having cooler nights. It's time to get it going. And um, I've got the itch right now, actually, to go ahead and get my stuff out. I wish I would have had it out probably like two weeks ago. I mean, we had a couple hot days this week, like 90, like right at 90. But even a 90-degree day, even two days of 90 in a row is not going to make your your plants bolt that that quickly. So I kind of wish I would have already had them out, but hopefully uh, that late freeze this year, the, whenever we get our first frost and freeze this year, it'll be later on into the season, and we'll hopefully get a nice harvest this year. So um, I know we are... Uh, here at the nursery getting stocked on a lot of this stuff we're low right now because we got picked over on the weekend there was a lot of smart people out there getting their veggies and getting them set out so we've got trucks coming in i believe today or tomorrow that's going to be starting to get fully stocked with um, all of your coal crops and we are fully stocked with seed right now so uh, like i said dropping seed and watching it germinate and come up in a row or wherever is like one of my favorite things about horticulture, um, it's fascinating to watch. If you've never done it or never tried it, waiting those that week, week and a half, you're sitting there thinking, this seed's never going to come up. It's, you know, I just dropped this for no reason. And then once it does and it all comes up uniformly and how you wanted it to, there's no greater feeling to me. So uh, play with some seeds a little bit. I think you'll enjoy it. It's, it's fun to do if you've never done it. Yeah. It's also fun <laughs> to experiment with uh, succession sowing too. Especially with lettuce, where you mm-hmm. can follow up the next week with another toss, and then yeah. you know your lettuce that comes up, cut it to about two inches tall, and harvest those leaves, and watch the next batch come up. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, succession planting is fun, and lettuce is a fun one because it's so quick to germinate. It's mm-hmm. uh, if the conditions are right, it'll it'll germinate like within three days. Um, do know lettuce? Um, a little fun fact: lettuce does. Um, benefit from having sunlight um, during germination. So, if you're going to press it into the soil at all, just give it a, a just a press down like this, just to make sure it's like seeded in the earth, but not covered up. So, we want sunlight to get to that seed, and uh, that'll that'll quicken your germination time by a lot. You'll be amazed. So, uh, yeah, within a couple, two or three days, you've already got some lettuce already up, and it's a it's a fun one to do. A lot cheaper too. A lot cheaper, y'all. So where are we at here? All right, so that's 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 a fall garden for you. It's it's trial and error. It's fun. It's um, sometimes can be annoying. <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're not vigilant and you forget one night that and you don't realize it's going to be cold and then you get a freeze and it just whacks everything you got out there. It's part of it. It's part of gardening. It happens. I hope it doesn't happen to you. Um, but it's still worth a try. I think and. Um, I just like doing it. I just think it's fun. So let's also briefly touch on uh, fruit, fruit trees, and berries, and if this is a good time to plant those. And oh yeah, if you I had was gonna, plans to add that to your garden. Yeah, year. I was going to transition to a little bit of more ornamental um, mm-hmm. type of things for the fall as well. I know in my brain when I hear fall garden, I think of fall. Well, I just spoke on for however long, uh, but. A lot of people think of their garden as just their ornamental gardens, their their you know fun place, their you know their landscaped areas where they go out and hang out. A lot of people call that a garden. That's just my brain doesn't go there when I hear fall garden. I think about veggies. But if we want to touch a little bit on some things to do in the fall, um, Tyler just mentioned a great one, which is uh, planting trees and 
or fruit. What's nice about planting fruit trees and fruit berry type um, shrubs, say uh, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, all grapes, all those good things. Um, it's good to get them in in the fall because then you get to reap the rewards of the fruit in the spring. So you're going to actually see them go dormant and they're going to come back in the spring and they're going to flower for you and then produce fruit behind that. Now, a small fruit tree is not going to produce a lot of fruit. Y'all understand that. A small fruit tree that we sell can still produce fruit. Uh, with every flower, there can be potential fruit. But there's just not a lot of stems. There's not a lot of tree to it yet. So there's not going to be a lot of flowers and not going to be a ton of fruit. So don't expect that on the first season. But it is still fun to see them flower and then potentially fruit behind that. Now, your blackberries and your raspberries are going to pretty much flower and fruit without a problem even if you buy a young small plant they're still going to produce for you the, that first season so um, fall is to me and for a lot of people the best time to really plant those deciduous trees and not even just fruit trees but uh, ornamental trees as well speaking of we just got a large shipment of uh, deciduous trees in the other day 15 and 25 gallon trees which are two of the 15 gallons is probably our best selling size tree and then 25 gallons are about as big of a tree as we sell so it was a full semi front to back um, tons of trees and everything that came off of that truck looked fantastic i was really really happy with the, the trees that came off this year the quality was excellent um so Getting prepped for the fall is thinking about planting some trees. I love planting trees. I've got a bunch on my property. And um, I just think if you've got space, why not? I mean, throw some trees out there. They're fun. They're fun to watch grow. Um, and we've got great selection of them. Now, tomorrow, I believe tomorrow, we're supposed to be getting a shipment of our fruit trees and our fruiting shrubs and bushes and all that. Um, it's going to be a very large truck. It's going to take us a good amount of time to get it all unloaded and set out but that's supposed to be tomorrow do not quote me on that it, trucking it's all weird nowadays so don't know if it's coming tomorrow but it is scheduled to come tomorrow so the weekends are usually safe to head out to the nursery if you're looking for something that's supposed to be coming in because we don't get shipments on the weekends yeah exactly yeah everything comes in we try to get it all set out for y'all before you come out here and just ravage us on the weekends and uh, take all of our new stuff so it's going to be like i said new stuff coming out fruit trees um, tons of fruit this year fruit is is gotten so popular people want to do it and i don't blame them um, so we're going to have what you need here soon um, and I'll just add, um, you know, for those people who love strawberries, now is yes. a good time. And we actually have some strawberries at the nursery at the moment. If you can find them, now is a good time to do it because you will get a crop next year. Whereas, you know, if you planted one in spring earlier this year, you'll get some berries from it. But the next year when it really gets established is when you get your big crops. So. Yeah, and they actively grow a lot better too. I mean, that's the get you know getting these things out, especially hardy things like strawberries that just live perennially here. <clears throat> getting them set out in the fall, like Tyler just said, is is great because you get to reap the rewards in the spring, and you don't really have to do much over the winter time. That's what's kind of nice. You kind of set them and forget them. To be honest with you, we've been so wet here over Middle Tennessee over the over the winter time, so it doesn't snow anymore here hardly. It just rains a lot over the winter, so. For the most part, you don't have to do any added watering. It's a lot easier for this stuff over the over the course of the winter. And that's the exact same thing for your deciduous hardwood trees and shrubs that you're going to plant. Really, any shrub um, or tree. Or if you want to go ahead and redo your whole landscape, like the fall is the time to do it. It's so much less stressful on, on the plants and then also on you. You don't have to do near as much um, over the wintertime. For the most part, those things are going to water it for you. If you do plant a deciduous tree um, in the fall and it drops its leaves over the winter time, you generally, as long as you planted it correctly, you generally don't have to water that thing at all over the winter. It's not actively photosynthesizing. There is no green. So it's in a dormancy phase. So it's not like taking up a good amount of water or anything. So for the most part, you don't have to water a, a, a newly planted tree through the whole winter time. Right after you plant it, most definitely you need to soak it and oh, make yeah. sure it really gets water to the root zone when you first plant it. But then after that, just observing it, and then once it sheds its leaves, you're pretty well in the clear until next summer, whenever you need to start watching it again, just to make sure if we go through periods of drought, if it does need added water uh, to do it then. But great time to be planting trees for sure, y'all. And then, I guess, I'm pretty well done with, I think, the fall garden prep. I think I 
pretty well hit it on what you ought to be doing. It's time to get going on it. Um, but I did want to mention that Tyler has got a good um, schedule that the UT Extension Agency puts out that kind of is a month-by-month -month, like timing chart on what to be doing. So here it is. It's up tasks for September, as you see, and then um, a whole bunch of other stuff, talking about soil testing, which is a good a good idea to do. And then there's the calendar, which is really helpful for for people that don't do, you know, that garden near as much as what we do and, and to look at this calendar and say, oh, I could be doing some of these things right now. So uh, Tyler, take it away on how do you can find that. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it's an easy Google, uh, but I can try and drop a link in here. It's just UT Extension Garden Calendar. And that is for pretty much the entirety of Tennessee. They cover the eastern regions as well as middle and western Tennessee. So you'll see the eastern regions will they'll encourage you to finish up a little sooner uh, with your planting. Uh, but there are some great tips in here and things that we've covered. Like on the 13th, they said brassicas and fall crops are fast growing and may need side dressing fertilizer, well, like what we talked about. Army worms are ravaging lawns right now, so that's something to be on the lookout. We've had a big outbreak of them this year. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like a farmer's almanac, but it's hyper-localized to the Middle Tennessee area. So uh, yeah, and that's that they have the calendar for the whole year, correct? I mean, that's every month, right? Yes, on every kind of what's every month. Uh, you know, we got October in here, and on finishing the year out, and it gives you these tips and tasks as well as helpful links. So it's it's super useful. Uh, <clears throat> that I, is that is a good. You know, it's kind of like cumulated knowledge from some some horticulturalists and and specialists who just really that's what their life is about here in yeah Middle that, that is a good tool to use I, I like that one like i said i think i'm done here um we got stuff coming in like crazy at the nursery this whole week gosh yesterday we got like five or six trucks it felt like a spring day out here there's a lot of moving parts a lot of going on we're trying to get the lot filled back up for y'all um to to get ready for your fall season so like i said wanting to redo your landscape, wanting to just add some shrubs, wanting to plant a few trees, get some fruit going, whatever you're ready to do. Um, it is really a great time to be planting out there right now, and one of them, our favorite seasons of the year is fall in Middle Tennessee. So, if um, you uh, if you all, also if you have any questions, now would be the time to submit. Yeah, we don't want to just <laughs> disappear. If you do have any questions or th something that we didn't cover, or maybe something that you've got planned in your own garden that uh, that you have questions about. Just let us know. Email uh, uh, the nursery at info at batesnursery.com. If you can't get it together right now or if you have some photos, we'll be able to take a look at that. Or you can come into the nursery and Austin can work with you on any plans you might have. Questions, show you examples of uh, crops, things like that. Been here a long time and we, we plan on being here for even longer. And we appreciate everyone coming out and everyone watching these. We, we enjoy doing them. I enjoy doing them, especially on rainy day like this because I don't really want to be out there in the rain but <laughs> anyway it's um, just annoying enough you yeah. know it's a little sprinkly here and there yeah so all right um well, not seeing very many questions so we're, i think we can go I must ahead have covered it yeah all you right were very thorough as always uh keep planting it's horticulture it's awesome it's fun try some seeds got to try some seeds y'all if you've never done it do it it's it's a lot of fun so uh we'll keep doing these and we'll be checking back in so thank you guys and have a great day